In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to make a multi-planed, multi-layered panning background. This may seem overwhelming now, but during this tutorial, you will learn how to build this scene up from scratch and pick up some tricks and tips along the way. So let's get started, and let's start animating the animatron way. Okay, now that we have Animatron open to a new project, the first thing we're going to do is change the canvas size. And you can accomplish that by going to the left-hand upper corner where it says canvas size. The W is width and the H is height. We're going to make this half of HD, so we'll make it 720 by 480. And now we can start building our, our background. Let's first start with outlining our canvas. Now this is what I like to call a dummy layer. It's just going to be a layer that outlines the canvas area. We're going to have many different objects and vector shapes overlapping over the canvas. So your canvas is going to be completely covered. And it's just a visual representation of the actual canvas. So we'll click the box tool and we'll click in the upper left hand corner of the canvas. We'll click and drag the whole size of the canvas. And just so it's perfect, we will go up here in the top panel and manually type in the size. And now it's covering the entire canvas. But we do not need that fill. So we'll select the box, click fill, click the red circle with the slash through it. Our fill disappears and we need the stroke. So we'll make that stroke black. And we will change the thickness of the stroke to four. Now you can use any color or any thickness. Again, this is just a dummy layer to help you visualize the canvas when we have all those vectors and graphics on the canvas. So we'll actually change the name of that layer to camera and we will lock it. Now we can start actually building our background. What we're first going to start with is creating the planes in our multi-plane panning background. Now as we create our multi-planed background, we have to keep in mind that each plane is going to be animated. They're going to be panning. And what we're going to start with is the sky. So we'll just click the box tool again. We'll click and drag. That's good. Um, we do not need a stroke anymore, so we'll just click the stroke color. And we do need to fill, and we will, let's make it a pink color. Now we can rename that layer sky, and lock it. We'll create a new layer, still using the box tool, and we will create our foreground panel, and we'll change that color to orange. We will rename that layer ground one. Now you can name these layers anything you like, just as long as you name them, because when you name the layers, it helps you know what's on that layer. <laughs> Instead of having a bunch of untitled layers that you're clicking around in, you can quickly look at the title and know what's on that layer. So we're gonna use that box tool, create another panel. This time we're gonna make it, um, make it a little bit lighter. We'll drag that underneath the first one, 
There's our second. And as you can see, we can no longer see our canvas size, but good thing we made our camera layer. We'll just drag that to the top and there we go. We can actually see what would be in the camera shot. Now that we have our background, foreground, and sky layers blocked out, let's start to add depth to our background. And we will start with the sky. So we can lock the ground layers and select our sky layer. We can click fill, click the create new color button, which is that multicolored sphere. That opens up the Choose Fill Color dialog, and we want to work with the Linear Gradient. And we can click on Linear Gradient, and Animatron automatically loads up that gradient onto that selected shape. Now, by default, it loads up two colors, but you can add a bunch of colors to the gradient just by clicking on the bottom slider. And you can go into that color by clicking that little square and changing the color. Now you can add a bunch of different colors. But for this guy, we just need two. So you can get rid of these little boxes by just clicking and dragging. Just click and drag them away. And we're back to our original two colors. We definitely don't want black. We like our pink color. But we're going to select this black and we're going to make it just a little bit darker shade of pink. And that's, that's perfect. The only problem is, is that by default, Animatron loads up the linear gradient horizontal. For our purposes, we need it vertical. So you can change that gradient by these little black nodes. You can see within that, you can click and drag those anywhere in that gradient box to adjust or change the style of gradient. Now that looks pretty good to me. And now we can also move these boxes on the slider to add more pink or more red to our sky. So there's a few ways to adjust the gradient. And that looks great. So we'll hit OK. And now our sky is a bit more dynamic. OK, so we're going to do the same thing for this background layer. We'll unlock those and select that object. We'll click Fill. Hit that Create New Color button. Choose Linear Gradient. Now this time we want to go lighter. When things are farther away in an image, they tend to get lighter. And that will help us give the illusion of depth in our image. So we'll select that black and we'll pick Lighter Color Yellow. Uh, let's go. There we go. That's perfect. And again, we need a vertical gradient, so we'll grab that node and adjust those. It's perfect. And there we go. And last, we will do the foreground. Select that object. Click Fill. Choose new color button, linear gradient. I'm going to go slightly lighter. Adjust those nodes. A little bit more. There we go. Hit OK. Let me move this up just a little bit. Move that down. 
And there you go. It's already starting to come together. So our next step would be to add a sun. So we'll create a new layer. We'll name that layer sun. We'll use the oval tool. Now if you hit shift and drag with this oval tool, it'll scale that oval uniformly. And we need a perfect circle for the sun. So that should do it right there. We'll change the color by clicking fill, choosing a yellow. And there you have it. With four basic shapes, our desert background is already starting to come together. So let's continue working on the sky. Let's create some clouds. We'll create a new layer. And it just so happens that in my library, I have created some clouds that I can just drag on screen. There's one. And two. And three. Let me show you how I created these clouds. We'll create a new layer, and I will come lock everything else. I will select the pen tool. Now, the pen tool will use whatever fill or stroke you had used prior in any of the shapes we made. So if we click and drag, you'll see that it's using no stroke and the fill we used in this bottom ground color. So what I usually do is just create a benign shape and I'll change the stroke to black or whatever color you're comfortable with, whatever you can see on that back background. And then I make the fill nothing. Now you can delete that object, recreate that layer, use that pen tool, and you have that stroke. So let's create a cloud. Well, these are very stylized clouds. And I'm going to click every time there's going to be a crease in the cloud. And then you click that last node to shut that tool. And I'm trying to make all my lines bezier, and I do not want that. So all you have to do is hover over the pen tool, select the convert bezier nodes tool, click on that line, and it will make a straight line again. So we'll, we'll go through and we'll click each individual line. Now they are all straight. Now we'll zoom in a little bit. Now this work starts to get a little bit tedious. Just like in any other vector-based program like Flash or Illustrator, you can edit these nodes little handles pop up and we can edit them. So I am just slowly but surely creating a fairly stylized cloud. And 
Okay, so now we can pull and prod till we get it to how I like it. That's a little bit too big. Let's make that a little smaller. Oops. Don't forget that Control Z or Command Z is your undo tool. You will learn to love that tool when you manipulate vectors. All right, so let's make this one just a little bit smaller and Oops. Control Z. And there you go. Well, there's one of our clouds. So we can zoom out. And you can see we've just created a new cloud. Now it's a little bit bigger than the other one. So we can select that, hold shift. It's a little bit smaller. Let's place it right there. Now we can select that object, get rid of the stroke, and make it just a fill. And there's our cloud. And that's exactly how I made these other clouds. And they look great. Now as much as I like that new cloud we created, I'm going to repurpose it. We're going to select it, drag them down. We need clouds all the way in the back to give the sky more depth. So we're going to stretch it out. We're going to squeeze them down. Shrink them just a little bit more. So it looks like it's further away. We're going to recolor it. It's a little bit too dark. Let's light them up just a little. We'll drag another cloud out there. Do the same thing. Squeeze it down, change its color. Let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. Now let's take a look at our sun. Let's give our sun a gradient. We don't want it to be just a solid color. Let's select our sun shape. Click the fill. Create new color button. And this time we'll choose radial gradient. And you can see that animatron loaded up that radial gradient on that selected shape. All we have to do is change that color from black to a brighter yellow. There you go. Don't need to move it. It's perfect. Hit OK, and the gradient has been applied to our sun. Now let's take a look at our background. Let's select that shape. And instead of having it be a flat, boring shape, we're going to adjust this shape with the Busy tool. So we'll select that node, a little handle pops out. We can adjust that bend. We'll adjust it just a tiny bit. 
just to give the eye something interesting to look at. Let's move this cloud up a little bit. Our sky is pretty much done. Let's start building from all the way in the back to the front. So let's create some mountains all the way in the back. And I have some mountains created in my library. So we can drag them out. There they are. And we can adjust the ground layer. Almost fits perfectly, but let's click that. Adjust that so it fits. There we go. Now I created these mountains just like I created the clouds. So let's go in this group and take a look at the mountains. Zoom in a little bit. Select one, and you can see where all the nodes are. So while we're in here, let's create another mountain. We'll lock the other two. We'll select Tool. and let's just create one off to the right over here. Our background's going to be panning, so it's going to need to be a little longer anyway. You could just loosely create any kind of shape just as long as it stays mountainous. There's no real trick to it. There we go, that's perfect. So we'll just select that, change its color. It's a little bit darker to match them. There we go. And there you have it. There's another mountain in our mountain group. Let's go take a look. There it is. Before we go any further, let's take a look at our layers and how things are situated. But often happens, and I fall victim to it as well, very often, things become unorganized. What we need to do is take a minute and organize our layers. We'll move the sun above the sky. We'll name this layer Cloud 4. Purposed. And we move all these layers of the clouds in front of the sun. And the camera back on top.
now that we have our camera layer back on top, we can actually see what will be in frame for animation. And we could start to move around certain things. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring this down a little bit more, push this up, bring this mountain layer down. Maybe pull the sun over just a little bit, move those clouds. Because don't forget, we're staging with keeping animation in mind. So we're creating artwork, making the basic layout, all with animation in mind. But you got to make things look good before you animate them. So this is looking fairly decent to me right now, so we can move on. Okay, so let's create another set of mountains that are closer to the camera. Our layers seem to be in order, so let's create a new one. And it just so happens I created some mountains that are in my library. We can bring out these and place them on the stage. Now I created these mountains just like I created the, the ones before it and just like the clouds using the pen tool and just creating basic shapes using bezier and straight lines and then just using the fill. We can go into that group, take a look at them and you can see just like the other mountains and clouds, that's how I created them. So let's create another one of these. Now it doesn't have to be crazy. I mean, I went a more stylized route because that's just my particular taste. So we're going to create another mountain in that same vein. Now I'm just making this up as I go along. We can add or subtract nodes to make different shapes. Use the Convert Bezier tool. Start to bring this together. We can move nodes to make things closer. And there you go, looks pretty good. Let's change its color to match the other two. What color do I use? Perfect. Let's go back to that scene and take a look, and there it is. Now we'll probably go back and add more into there when we start to animate to see how things flow together, but those three look pretty decent to me right now. So we'll leave those alone and add yet another layer of mountains. So let's, I'll go into my library and grab the other mountains that I created or rock formations, whatever you like to call them, and place them on the stage. Now these are really stylized. Um, the, ba the mountains in the background didn't really have to be so detailed because they're so far away. Things tend to look rounded out and lighter 
as they go back. But as we come closer to the camera, things are going to look a little bit more detailed. Even if they're stylized, you still have to raise the detail level just a little bit. And these guys are all spaced apart because I designed them with animation in mind and these layers are going to be panning. So we need to have a, a long line of rock formations. That's why these are all spaced apart very far. Let me take a look at all of them. You can kind of see how it's going to work as we pan it back and forth. And you can really start to see it coming together as a background. So we have three planes of existence right now. The Wayback Mountains in between and then the ones closer to the camera. And as you can tell, as they gradually get closer to the camera, they get more saturated. So that's creating that sense of depth. Even in a vectorized, stylized background, it's really important to remember this because it really adds depth to your images. Okay, so let's go into this group and create a rock formation. We'll create a new layer. Grab the pen tool. Looks good. Let's uh, change the color of it by selecting it. Go to fill. Create a new layer just to create that added layer of detail of the darker color. Go back over it with the pen tool. the color to that darker color. Let's add a node. by clicking and then we can edit those by sliding them over and let's do the other one creating these the same way that I created the clouds and the other mountains. At first, if you're not used to the pen tool, it can be very tedious. You just got to stick with it and, and basically just practice. You just got to have patience with it. And there you go. Let's take a look how that looks. There it is. Okay, let's place that back. All right, so now that I, I started to place these mountains and background elements in, that back layer of dirt or sand is too light. It goes, it, there's not enough of a gradient on it. So I'm going to fix that. 
So I'm going to select it, go into fill, click the create new color button, and open up that linear gradient dialog. So we'll just use that slider. And that looks pretty good. Maybe we can tone down that color just a little bit. I can lighten that up just a little, just a tad. Okay. That looks pretty good. So we fixed that gradient on that back plane. Let's adjust this foreground gradient just a little bit. So we select that. We'll go into its gradient. There we go. I think that's good. Now that we adjusted the color to our ground level, I want to adjust the color to the, um, the background clouds. I want to desaturate them a little bit. So we can just select those, click fill, click the create new color button, and just desaturate them just a little bit. So that looks, that looks perfect. And we'll do that to the second one. And there we go. Now that we have our basic layout finished, this is the end of part one. In the next tutorial video, we will continue to create vector elements, fill out our background, and start on some animation. I will see you there.